who is set to make a statement this coming season in the college football landscape. There's a lot of teams we got to talk about, but I think the team that probably comes to mind first when I was sitting down to craft this segment, the Texas Longhorns, man. I think the sentiment you'd like to leave or the, or the statement you'd like to make if you're a Texas Longhorn fan or maybe internally at Texas is that you have to deal with us when it comes to you know talking about the college football playoff and the conference championship race and the Big 12 and the SEC. Like There's so much about Texas that has been brewing now for a couple of years. It's year three for Sark. We say it all the time on here. There's no more excuses that you're making. This is the year where you say, okay, our window's here. We got an experienced quarterback. We got a year three culture. We got a bunch of weapons on the outside. Xavier Worthy, Isaiah Nayor, A.D. Mitchell. Like You know the drill. They got a lot of pieces there. This is the year for them to really show what they're going to be under Steve Sarkeesian. And I put a poll out on my Twitter page, at J.D. Pakel at the end of last week. And I asked... Would a Big 12 title mean Texas is back? And a lot of y'all, to my surprise, were like, no. The majority of that vote was no. That's not what means Texas is back. And I think a lot of Texas fans actually even chimed in and agreed on that. And so I just say that to make sure that I, I, I'm clear in the sense that this is a big building block year. Like this is the start of the new foundation. So much of what Steve Sarkeesian has done at Texas has been working to get Texas out of the hole that they were in and now getting them to a place where they can compete for what they want to compete for. And this is that year where you take the first step, taking back what you believe is yours at Texas. So a Big 12 title, I think, is attainable. But for, for Texas, the statement they're trying to make is, you now have to deal, deal with us when you talk about teams that are competing for things across the college football landscape. No more, Texas is down, Texas is you know a thing of the past. Like I'm, I'm not here to say Texas is back. But I do think they're somewhere in the middle, and you'd like to believe they're somewhere past the midway point after the results of this coming season. So Texas, absolutely a statement team in 2023. Really quickly, you already know what I'm going to say. Make sure you're subscribed to this channel because we talk ball every day, and you love ball, we love ball. It's a great deal. Make sure you like the video. Make sure you follow me on the socials, at Judy Pakel, Twitter, Instagram. You can find me there. Thank you in advance for that. We're moving right along right now. Let's go to the SEC where Texas is actually about to be. And let's take a look at the Alabama Crimson Tide. They are 1 million percent a statement team when it comes to this coming season. And the statement they would like to make is, did you forget about us? I think even more so, they'd like to say, how did you forget about us? They want to remind everybody that Bama is still Bama. And listen, it wouldn't be a statement so much, I think, for, for everyone that's tuned into this show, because you all know, we're not looking past Bama this year. We think Bama is still going to be Bama. But they want to remind a lot of people in other circles in the SEC that Nick Saban hasn't lost his touch at all. Like, yes, Georgia's back-to-back -back national champs. No one's taken that away from them. But I think for Alabama, if they were to get back to the college football playoff, I think that would send a very clear message to everyone else. The statement would be very clear. We're not going anywhere. You really forget about us? Really? You thought that we were just going to fade quietly into that good night? You, you must not know what we're about here at Bama. You must not know what we've built this thing on. You must not know how we've recruited so well over the past few years. Getting back to bully ball, it's going to be a big piece of it for Bama to make that statement. But they are absolutely a team looking to make a statement. I think very, very, very reasonably could make a statement in 2023. Tennessee, another statement team. And they're sort of on the other end of the spectrum here where you talk about teams looking to arrive. And that's kind of the statement I think they want to make. Tennessee wants to allow the entire world to know we are here, we are for real. Because there's so much made about what Hendon Hooker was and what Jalen Hyatt was and the run they had last year and they beat Bama and they stormed the field, tried to throw some goalposts into the river. Turns out they don't float. Like That was kind of the good story that people like to talk about with Tennessee last year. But they say, okay, that happened, but now Hendon Hooker, he's gone. You got Joe Milton stepping in. Hope you don't think he's changing the game for you. That's what they want to say. I'm telling you this. I, I think Joe Milton will be a game changer for Tennessee. And I think to make that statement that you are for real and that wasn't just a one-year wonder and that wasn't just a, you know, you had the right pieces for, you know, one magical year and this thing is going to have some staying power, I think you need to beat either Alabama or Georgia this coming season. You got to beat one of those teams because that would solidify, hey, listen, you got to talk about us with the top tier in the SEC. You got to talk about us now as, as one of those top teams. We are for real. Like I just mentioned a minute ago, I also think double digit wins. If you could make that happen, that would 
also cater to the idea that you are a for real operation. And I think they are, to be transparent. I believe in Josh Heupel. I believe in the system they run. I believe in the culture that I've been able to gauge from what they do there. I believe in how they're recruiting. Like I, I'm bought in on Tennessee now. I think it's just going to be a matter of taking it to the field and executing. Again, taking down one of the big boys from a brand perspective, Alabama and Georgia, get one of them like you did last year. I think that would give you a lot of credibility and prove that you are for real in Knoxville. How about another team looking to make a statement? A team that is, in my mind at least, and for a lot of y'all, synonymous with one of those premier brands in college football. It's kind of on its way back in some ways. I say on its way back. The Notre Dame Fighting Irish. When I say on its way back, I mean, you think about Notre Dame, and historically, like a little more historically than some of us want to remember, they're a team that has competed for national championships. I mean, they haven't done it super, super recently. But I I just want to make sure that there's an understanding of what Notre Dame has been in the past. And Marcus Freeman steps into that and says, no, no, no. Just because we haven't been there super recently, that's still the standard here at Notre Dame. I don't care about you know how difficult it is to get into school here and the ways that we're hamstrung by being in South Bend, Indiana. Like We're, we're still one of those teams that is going to compete for everything that everybody else is competing for nationally. Like they're looking to make it very, very clear they're going to abide by the standard that has been set historically for Notre Dame. They're not running from it. They're not worried about not being in a conference. If you don't believe me, look at Marcus Freeman and what he did going out and grabbing Sam Hartman. A sentiment we have talked about many times on this show. Nobody forced Marcus Freeman to go get Sam Hartman. He had his starting quarterback from a year ago coming back. Nobody would have batted an eye if they came into week one with Tyler Buckner as a starting quarterback. But even so, he says, no, 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 no. I think we can get better. I think we have a guy that we can bring in and can compete and help us elevate our game. Goes out and grabs the best transfer portal quarterback available and ACC's all-time touchdown pass leader and is going to elevate them. Now, a big part of them making this statement that the standard isn't changed, that they're still trying to achieve what they've achieved historically is going to be having an alpha playmaker on the outside step up. I think that's going to be a big piece of it. But even so, credit Marcus Freeman and company for doing what they have said they were going to do and challenging everything and recruiting at a top 10 level. They're, they're pushing the envelope here, and I respect the heck out of Marcus Freeman for it. So keep an eye on Notre Dame. They are absolutely looking to make a statement in 2023. Last team I want to talk about here, the Penn State Nittany Lions. The statement they want to make is kind of similar to Tennessee, but for Penn State, their statement is, you better mention us. And when I say you better mention us, when you talk about those teams in the Big Ten that are like the big boys, right? The Ohio States, the Michigans, those are teams that you better include us in the same breath with. And they have the roster to do it. We had Sean Fitz on from Blue White Illustrated not too long ago, and we were just talking about how it's no longer a thing for Penn State where... They're trying to, you know, overcome the roster they don't have next to those teams. Like, you look at how they've recruited. Look at some of those cats they got already on campus that made an impact for them as freshmen. Nick Singleton, Abdul Carter. Like, those dudes can play now. There's no wondering about what will they eventually be. If you're wondering about what they will eventually be, you're wondering about how many times they'll make an All-American team. Because you know they're going to be players for you. You know they're going to be all-conference guys for you. That should be a given. I think when you look at this team, a lot of the pressure, as we've mentioned many times before on this show, lies with Drew Aller. Drew Aller is so talented, he has the potential to unlock more talent within this roster, if that makes sense. Like, when I have a talented quarterback, and I'm worried about the field being stretched as a defensive coordinator, I might lighten the box a little bit. You don't want to lighten the box with Nick Singleton playing running back for you, Katron Allen playing running back for you. Like, it's a thing where now they're so balanced and have more explosivity available to them if Drew Aller is who we believe he will be. Penn State's in that tier where they're saying, you've, you've talked a lot about Michigan and Ohio State being those top two. Talk about us now. You better mention us. That's the statement they want to make, and I absolutely love them for it. Penn State, man, one of those teams that I get excited about talking about because I, I truly believe in the way they've built to it and the depth they have right now. And so I'm just curious to see if they're able to make that statement in 2023. And a lot of it does reside with the the progression of Drew Aller, especially early on in the year. So teams looking to make a statement. To recap it for you, Texas, not trying to say they're back. 
That's not what this year is about. It's about taking that step forward and making it clear to everybody else, you got to deal with us here at Texas. Yeah, we're leaving the Big 12, we're going to the SEC, but you got to deal with us here for years to come. For Alabama, you really forget about us? Is that the thing? Are you sure you want to go that you want to go that route with us? I wouldn't, but all right. We'll try and remind you here. Tennessee sustained success. Proving you're for real. That's the statement they're trying to make. Notre Dame, standard is the standard. It's been the same way for a long time. History is history, but we're not falling back just because we haven't won a national title in a minute here. We're we're still striving for those things. Do not get it twisted for Penn State, like we were just saying. They want to be mentioned with those top teams in the Big Ten. I think they have every opportunity to do it here in 2023. Hey, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.